Hi guys, welcome to this video on the sliding filament theory. In this video we're going to focus on the sarcomere, which is a small subunit of the muscle fibre, and I'll explain all that to you in just a moment. Let's get started. So let's begin talking about skeletal muscle structure so we can just recognise what it is we're talking about in the context of the overall muscle when we come to talk about the sarcomere. So a muscle as a whole um, will begin on a bone, it will attach to a bone via a tendon. And the muscle belly will be made up of a series of co a collection um, or groups of muscle bundles. And those muscle bundles are technically known as fascicles. And then each fascicle is made up of smaller units and the smaller units that make up a fascicle are known as muscle fibres. And we know about the different muscle fibre types that we have in the human body. But if we go even more microscopic and we, we zoom down into muscle fibres and look at those, we will find that each muscle fibre is made up of what we call myofibrils. Myofibrils. And we're going to focus in on the myofibril in just a moment. Um, before we do, just to note that a myofibril as you'll see in a second, a myofibril is also made up of smaller units and those units are known as filaments. So in terms of the structure of the skeletal muscle, we, we can go from the whole muscle, the muscle belly overall, and we can scale down and down and down until we get to the myofibril, which is made up of a couple of key filaments that we're going to find out about in this session. So here we have a diagram that represents the structure of the myofibril. Now remember that there are several myofibrils that make up a muscle fibre. And these myofibrils, I've tried to show with the dotted lines and with these arrows, that the myofibril runs the entire length of the muscle. So from one end of the muscle all the way through to the other end of the muscle, a single myofibril will run the entirety of that length. But in that length, we can divide that myofibril up perpendicular to the, um, to the long axis, if you like, the, the length of the muscle, in perpendicular segments that we refer to as sarcomeres. sarcomeres. And there, are, there may be hundreds of thousands of sarcomeres in a relatively large muscle. And they are units that you can see on the screen here now, between these blue Z-shaped lines, these zigzag blue lines, from one blue line to the next blue line, running perpendicular to the direction of the muscle, that little segment there is called a sarcomere. And for example, in the, in the biceps muscle in an, adult, um, in an adult body, you may have somewhere in the region of 100,000 of these sarcomeres. Um, next to one another that make up the entirety of the myofibril that runs again from one end of the muscle all the way to the other end of the muscle. So we're talking about very microscopic stuff here, very small segments of the myofibril. And you'll see on the diagram at the moment that this zigzag blue line that splits the myofibril into sarcomeres um, ha actually has its own name. And those blue zigzag lines that are on the screen now are known as Z lines. Now I'm going to um, fall foul of our American friends here who would call these Z lines, but I'm going to stick with Z lines because I'm a Brit, so that's how we do it. So these are Z lines. Uh, and as from Z line to Z line, this zigzag that runs sort of perpendicular to the direction of the myofibril, these Z lines are the boundaries of the sarcomere. So there'll be one sarcomere bounded by Z lines, then another sarcomere, then another sarcomere, and then another one all the way along the length of the myofibril. And like I say, there will be potentially hundreds of thousands in a, in a large uh, skeletal muscle. Let's zoom in a little bit closer and have a look at one individual sarcomere and see if we can um, understand its structure before we go on in a in another video to talk about exactly how it works to create muscular contraction. So let's zoom in a little bit. So here we are, we're looking at the structure of the sarcomere here and we're going to start off with these lines. So hopefully you can recognise that what's on the screen now is what was on the screen previously minus some of the additional stuff, minus the, the colouring and so on. 
So what we've got here is the sarcomere from one Z line to another Z line. And now on the diagram, we've got in the, our Z lines are in black. So our Z lines are there in black. So the Z line on the left, the Z line on the right represent the boundary of a single sarcomere. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just go through. I'm going to add things in as we go. And as we go, I'm going to name and identify um, what the various constituent parts are of the sarcomere so that you've got a good understanding of how the muscle cell, uh, how the myofibril fits together. Once we've got that understanding of its structure, we can start then to think about in a later video how things actually work in terms of muscular contraction. So there's our Z line in black. Um, now in blue, we have got something called actin filaments actin filaments now the actin filaments attach to the z line so at one end not at both ends but at one end the actin fil uh, filaments attach to the z line sometimes the z line is known as a z disc or a z body um, and shortly i'll show you um, a microscopic view of an actual muscle where you'll be able to see where the Z line is. It, it appears in under the microscope as a dark black line. And these are the anchoring points for the actin filaments. So you can see the actin filaments in the diagram on the screen are uh, shaded in blue. And there are several of them in each sarcomere. And although we've taken a cross section, if you were to turn it round and look at it as if you were looking through a telescope, um, down through the length of the muscle, you would see there was much more like a hexagonal or, or beehive type pattern here, uh, looking through rather than across the sarcomere. But we've taken a cross section here so we can try and understand what's going on. So the actin filament is a thin filament and it's essentially a protein. It's made of protein, it's a, it is a protein and it forms a filament attaching to the Z line and extending into the sarcomere. The red lines, the red lines here are a second kind of protein uh, that also forms a filament. So this is the second main filament in the sarcomere, which is known as the myosin filament, which is the thick filament. So we have a thin filament, we have a thick filament. Actin is the thin filament, it's attached to the Z lines directly. And then myosin is the thick filament. And myosin is approximately twice the thickness of actin, there or thereabouts. I mean, we're talking very, very microscopically small, but it is roughly twice the thickness of the actin filament. And these are what are called bipolar. That is, they extend from the center of the sarcomere out towards the Z line. The myosin itself doesn't actually contact the Z line, but it is attached to the Z line um, using another filament, which I'll tell you about in just a second, another protein. Now, the myosin, the thick myosin filaments extend out from the center of the sarcomere from a point that is known as the M line. So M for middle, I guess. Um, the M line. Um, and from the center of the sarcomere, you have these large, these thick filaments extending towards the Z line, but not actually contacting them. And in the opposite direction, you have the actin, the thin filaments heading towards the M line, but again, not actually contacting the M line. So they're sort of almost suspended between one another. And we'll talk about why that is in a later video. Now, the myosin filaments are in fact attached, not directly to the Z line, but by virtue of another filament. So these small filaments that attach the myosin to the Z line are called titan filaments. And these titan filaments extend from the Z line of the sarcomere, the, the bounds of the sarcomere, and it binds into the myosin filament. And the, the, this titan filament is highly elasticated. 
It's one of the most elasticated or the most elastic proteins uh, anywhere in the human body. It's really stretchy, basically. So it's the titan filament that attaches the thick myosin filament also to the Z-line. So having thought about some of the filaments and their names, we're now going to talk about some of the zones of the sarcomere. So there are several zones that each given a letter that represent segments or sections of the sarcomere itself. Um, so, for example, the first zones that I want to mention are the zones that are either side of the Z line. So either side of the Z line, you'll notice on the diagram, um, if you look at the left hand Z line, you'll notice that the titan filament extends from the Z line a little way until it meets the myosin filament. And it does the same in the opposite direction. So either side of the Z line, we have this titan filament extending from the Z line until it meets the myosin filament. And that zone, that area, either side of the Z line, before you get to the myosin filament, that's known as the I band. The I band. Now the letters of these zones and bands are all related to German words, uh, which I'm not going to pretend to try and pronounce, but you can look those up for yourself. But the I band is the band either side of the Z line um, before you get to the myosin filament. So it's not overlapped at any point. The I band is not overlapped at any point by the myosin thick filament. Then the central section that essentially is where the myosin filament is, that's known as the A band. So the A band is the entire length of a single myosin filament, the thick filament. And the A band does contain, although it is the length of the thick filament, as you can see from the diagram, it also contains some of the thin filaments as well, at least a segment or a section of thin filaments. So it's where the thin filaments and the thick filaments overlap, at least partially in the A-band. And then there's a section in the centre of the A-band. And that section in the centre of the A-band is a region where the actin, the thin filament, doesn't reach. It's not currently reaching. You can see on the diagram the actin filament extends towards the M-line but doesn't reach. So that zone in the centre just either side of the M line, where there's only thick filaments, that zone is known as the H zone, the H zone. And if you were to look at the H zone under a polarization microscope, you would notice that the H zone was lighter than the zone, the rest of the A band, because the rest of the A band is made up of both thin and thick filaments. Whereas the H zone is just that section where there's no actin filaments. It's just the thick filaments. So essentially there's less protein there. There are fewer filaments in the H zone. So it's a slightly lighter zone in the center of the A band. And then outside of the A band, um, either side of the Z line is the area known as the I band. Now let's just drop onto these, uh, onto this um, diagram at the top here, the Z lines, uh, where we would expect the Z lines to be in the middle of the I band, or roughly in the middle of the I band, and where we would expect the M line to be there in the middle of the H zone. And I've done that because now I'm going to take away the diagram at the bottom and I'm going to show you um, a microscopic view of what the muscle cell looks like or what the sarcomere looks like, and we're going to compare it with our diagram. So this is what the muscle cell, the, the sarcomere, looks like under a microscope. And you can see the elements, the parts that we've talked about. So let's label this up. So first of all, let's notice that on the outside of the, the darker section in the middle, um, that, that darker section in the middle, of course, is the A band. But on the outside of that, we've got the I band with the Z lines. 
So you can see the two Z lines, they, they are the boundaries of this particular sarcomere that we're looking at. And either side of those Z lines extends the I band. So coming in towards the center of the sarcomere, we have first of all, from the Z line, we have the I band. And then that darker section that runs between the two I bands is of course the A band. Now on this picture, the, the H zone, which is that central part where the actin is not overlapping the myosin, where the, the blue filament is not overlapping the red filament. You can see that's quite narrow on this uh, particular sarcomere. So the H zone is quite narrow, somewhat narrower than it was on our diagram earlier, but it's still there nevertheless. That, there's the H zone, and in the center of the H zone is the M line. So you can see in, in reality, in practice, uh, our diagram represents what the muscle cell itself, what the myofibril, what the sarcomere itself looks like. I bands on the outside with Z lines in between, uh, in the center of the I bands. Between the I bands, we have the A band. In the center of the A band, we have the H zone. And in the center of the H zone, we have the M line. Okay, so looking at the structure of the sarcomere again in our diagram form, um, I'm going to leave off the labels for now just to demonstrate uh, the very basics of what happens when a muscular contraction occurs. So don't forget we're looking at a sarcomere which is a, a small segment of a long myofibril and a myofibril runs the full length of a muscle and several of them um, together make up a muscle fibre and several muscle fibres and so on join together and join together until we've got our whole muscle. So this sarcomere is the small unit of contraction and very simply the reason we call the theory of muscular contraction the sliding filament theory is because this is what happens when we contract our muscles. The filaments, the actin and the myosin filaments slide past one another and that has the effect of bringing the Z lines closer together. That is what a concentric contraction is at the at the, the microscopic level. We've brought those Z lines closer together and if we're doing that along the entire length from left to right as you look at it on the screen, the entire length of the muscle cell we are bringing all the Z lines across the entire length closer together. Then we are bringing the, the bone at one end attached to the tendon and the bone at the other end attached to the other tendon. We're bringing those bones closer together and creating movement. So a concentric contraction occurs when these filaments slide past one another, hence the name sliding filament theory. And the converse is true. When the muscle relaxes or at least when the muscle lengthens, it may be under relaxation, it may be under an eccentric contraction. We'll talk about the difference between that, those things in a later video. But when the muscle lengthens or relaxes, the opposite occurs. So to reiterate, looking again at the myofibril here, a contraction is where the Z lines across the entire length or along the entire length of the myofibril, the Z lines move closer together. And relaxation is simply when they move further apart or at least allowed to move further apart. So on this diagram here, we've got the thick filaments, we've got the thin filaments, they're suspended between one another and kind of in and through one another. And the contraction occurs where the filaments slide past one another to bring the Z lines closer together. And then on relaxation, we have the opposite occur. Now we'll talk about how the filaments actually achieve this in the next video, um, but that's all for now. So I hope that's been helpful as a bit of an introduction to sliding filament theory. Um, it's really important to understand the sarcomere itself so that we can understand what's actually happening when we get into even more microscopic detail at the filament level in our next video. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.